All right, one of the techniques we talked about a couple times in the book, different, different techniques about doing panos, but I have learned a technique since the book that is fantastic and makes a huge difference in the way the panos stitch together later in Photoshop. It makes it so easy. Here's one of the problems, and I'll tell you what the solution is. The problem is, let me set this down, the problem is that when you stitch your pano together in Photoshop, they always kind of came out like a bow tie. They were kind of big at one end, and they got small, and they got big at the other end, and of course you'd have to crop it, and you'd take the middle, and you'd get your pano. Well, the technique I'm going to show you for shooting your pano is going to allow you to have to crop, have less of that bow tie effect, and keep more of the image. And all it takes is just a simple shift while you're shooting. Now, first, some camera techniques. Uh, back before Photoshop CS3, and it's even better in CS4, but back before then, I used to have to show you seven steps to do in your camera to get a successful pano to stitch together in Photoshop. Seven steps. Now, there's just one. You can shoot in aperture priority mode, no problem. You don't have to change anything else in your camera. Only one thing you really have to do, and that is make sure you overlap your segments by 20%. That's it. Overlap your segments by 20%, which means if I start to shoot a pano here, I'm going to shoot and make sure that the next segment I've overlapped a bit, and next segment I've overlapped a bit, and next segment I've overlapped, and I've overlapped and overlapped as I go around, okay? So that's the whole technique, but here is the foot technique that makes all the difference in the world. The deal is this, when you go to shoot your pano, you're going to start your first frame, you're going to go click, click here, I'm going to just shift to manual so it uh, will just fire no matter what. So you're going to go click, 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 click. Reseat your feet. Click, 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 click. Reset your feet. And click, 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 and kind of reseat them again as you come around. That little shift in the in your feet, just moving your body that little bit. Click, 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 click. Makes all the difference in the world on how the whole thing stitches together later in Photoshop. It's just the little stuff that makes the big difference. So what you're going to do is. 20% overlap. Also, I like to shoot, especially if I'm shooting like a mountain range or a cityscape or stuff, I like to shoot vertically. There's two advantages. Number one is there's less distortion to the images. Because you're shooting up tall, there's less that's going to kind of spread out on the ends. Number two is you're going to have more, if you do have to crop it, you're not going to crop off the top of the buildings or the top of the mountains or things like that. Also, just as a tip, don't shoot with a wide angle lens for your panos. It's going to make your panos that much tougher to do. You're going to have distortion on the edges. So shoot it like 70 millimeter, 80 millimeter, something in that range so it's a little further out. And you can even shoot with a 50 millimeter, but I wouldn't do anything like 35 or 14 or 24 or anything like that. Go a little bit longer on the lens range. Those couple of tips and you'll have great looking panos when you stitch them together in Photoshop.